What's up guys, Derek, moreplace18.com. Today we're going to be digging into the moreplace18 subreddit again. So this was, uh, I think, a appreciated video when I did the uh, reacting to shitty test levels video where I kind of just went through the most recent top posts on the Reddit and, uh, you know, reacted and gave some like rapid fire question and answer kind of shit. And um, to be honest, I was going there anyways to get content ideas. And I was like, well, I'm going to be going through these threads anyway. So you might as well just get basically my live reaction to them as I go through with some commentary, perhaps. So here we are. Now we indeed have 18.5 thousand. That's pretty fucking good. If I say so myself. Bless you, Derek. And I went and got... <laughs> Excuse me. That was a hectic one. We're all going to make it, bruh. Uh, your testosterone will be the end of you. No, nah, my depression will. They always ask, how much weight can you lift? But they, not, but they never ask, how much is weighing on you? Crying monkey. With Vegeta looking up into the sky. Pretty pissed. He's not too happy. Perhaps the heaviest things we lift are not our weights, but our fields. It's not, it's not easy being a sick cunt. Fork. If I, or foie, <laughs> I wish I had an award to give you. Someone can help me award this, this homie. Let's see. Insane trend f story fights, drugs, teen usage. All right. We are going to save that for later. Let's see. Eventually we started to talk to him more and juice was on fucking everything. Test, debel, and draw low dose of trend. Okay. I will definitely look at that later. A graph I made showing you why, showing why you should start PCT after Five half lives and the advantage of having higher injection frequency. Big up to Eric, you legend. Okay, so here we have 105 day cycle of 500 milligrams of test. Final injection, five half lives after final injection, 25 milligrams remaining. Yeah, again, so when you finish a cycle, the common bro science myth is if you're on a long ester two weeks after your last shot, you know, start taking serms, PCT drugs. And that's how you recover. You do that for four weeks. When in reality, if you don't wait five half lives, you're not going to have enough of the drug out of your system to it to for it to no longer be HPTA suppressive. So you're probably going to be mid PCT when this shit is clearing out of your system. Like you're using serms for literally no reason, essentially, and basically getting to the end of your PCT as the thing is actually clearing your clearing your system properly. So it's like your PCT should be occurring over here rather than. Over here, if that makes sense. Nandrolone decanoate, nine day half life. Yeah, as you can see, it's pretty fucking substantial how long it's going to have residual suppressive effects in the body. Five half lives of clearance, 23 milligrams remaining. Yeah, I had to repost as I noticed the mistake. LOL graph is a mathematical model utilizing a logarithmic decay function to model half lives and is not a replacement for getting bloods as everyone's response and clearance time varies. Yeah, obviously, you know, everyone's metabolism of different esterified compounds and whatnot is going to differ quite significantly. There's a reason why on the, um, even if you go to Wikipedia and you look at like, what's the half-life of fill in the blank, you know, any esterified steroid, it'll be like, you know, like seven to 10 days. Like it's like a, a big variation. It's going to depend on your age, you know, how well your body cleaves certain things, how well it metabolizes things, your liver function, um, shit like that is all going to play into how fast this stuff gets in and out of your system. And it's, um, you know, often goes overlooked, you know, like even Dutasteride, for example, it has like a two week half life or no, what is it like? Fuck. I mean, you think I'd remember off the top of my head. It's like three week half life or something. It's like, it's very long. It's quite long. It might even be four weeks. Fuck. But in that variation between the range of how, like what the half life is for like low end versus high end, like it's quite significant for older individuals who metabolize it way slower than a younger individual who has more efficient processes in the body. So like the variation in how fast you can get a compound under your system and for it to no longer be HPTA suppressive perhaps too in some circumstances can be quite different individual to individual. And that's, you know, not even factoring in, you know, genetic polymorphisms, things that affect, um, you know, detox pathways in the body, stuff like that. Um, let's see, not a replacement for getting blood as everyone's response and clearest times varies, but it does illustrate the points Derek makes about injection frequency and PCT timing. I did this because I'm mean, doing a PhD in neuropharmacology and this was a fun coding exercise. Feel free to ask any questions if you're not hundred percent clear on the graph. Um, if people want me to model other compounds, injection frequencies, etc., it's extremely easy now that I've written the code. 
Someone notified me that Testinante is nine day half-life. Okay, so that's not set in stone. Like how many different places you're going to find, again, there's a high end and a low end, and it's not like it's set in stone that it's nine days. Um, in Ante, in some like pharmaceutical archives are going to be referenced as much shorter than that. You know, it's not necessarily nine days for everyone. Draw the model doesn't take into account the uptake time and absorption properties of each compound. Um, drugs will almost certainly not be removed perfectly in line with logarithmic decay. This is an assumption we use to estimate it based on the half-life. Um, yeah, obviously there are a lot of caveats here, but it's a good like representation of what you actually expect nonetheless. Like sure, it's not gonna be exactly the fucking thing, but if you're gonna speculate about when these compounds are likely to no longer be HBTA suppressive, this gives you a way better ballpark gauge of when your PCT will actually be effective. So that is the main takeaway from it. I thought the half-life of Nanthe was like nine or 11 days. I always estimate E as seven day half-life and C as eight day. Actual half-life is more difficult to calculate since it's in an oil an oil depot injection, yeah, again, even the carrier oil is going to make a difference, you know? Like, what is it prepared in? It's not even just what the compound ester, ester chosen is. Okay, I think that is the gist of it. Definitely a good takeaway there. Just gonna leave this here. Your fragrances slash colognes twice as strong as the pre-daddy delt look 65 and 15 at the same time. That's why I posted it, lol. This wasn't supposed to be a cologne post. The guy looks like a completely different person. Yeah, I looked uh, pretty fucking dead there, and my uh, lips were very red. I think the saturation on my webcam was just, like, weird. Because, um, obviously, they don't... It's not like I do anything different to my fucking lips now, but they looked pretty uh, aggravated in the past. Like, this is... Some people, I think, commented about Accutane. Like, this was, like, way... I finished Accutane, like, years before this. So, I don't know. I think it was just the camera at the time. Um, cologne do you guys wear? My favorites are Eros, Aqua de Jo, YSL, um, uh, let's see, Eau de Parfum. I would, uh, check out Pro, what is it? Aqua de Jo Profumo, I think is the, probably the better alternative of this. Personally, Aqua de Jo is like the most fucking, well, to be honest, these are all like very, very likely to be things that a chick you're dating has smelled before on another guy. Like how many dudes have Eros? How many dudes have Aqua de Jo? Like, fuck. It's like the most played out fragrance of them all. Not that it's not good. It's amazing. But it's like, if you want to, if you want an Aqua de Jo replacement, get, um, Perry Ellis 360 Red. The likelihood that somebody else has that very low. Most people don't know about it. And it's like one tenth of the price. You can get a giant fucking tube of it for like 15 bucks and it smell to be honest it has better performance even than aqua de jo it is definitely a good alternative one of the best cheapies that you can possibly get definitely blind buy worthy get it versace eros obviously like the best like young young clubbing fragrance i would say for like late teens like early early 20s but um you know pretty uh pretty widely used for sure <laughs> Dior Sauvage if I'm going to wear some because you're a basic bitch. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, let's see. Tom Ford Tuscan Leather. Tom Ford fucking fabulous. Versace Signature. I deploy <laughs> arrows every day. Nice. Derek, please discuss. An Olympic runner was banned after testing positive for a steroid nandrolone. She believes it's a false positive from a pork burrito. Wow. Okay, I will definitely save that for later, and we shall see, because it's obviously a video in itself. How low in calories would you go before stopping a cut? Um, as low as it would be unsustainable, personally. Unless you're trying to step on stage or do a photo shoot that you know is not what you're trying to maintain your lifestyle as. If it's something that's supposed to be a, you know, you want to achieve a body composition that you can maintain long term, as soon as the diet gets to a point where you don't think it's sustainable and you're like asking a question of like, are my calories too low? Like, can I actually keep doing this? It's probably too low. You know, you probably got to rethink some things, gain some more muscle, redo the whole thing over again, perhaps afterwards. Like, it's not like it's a guarantee you're going to maintain the body composition you're happy with at the calorie amount that you're at, you know? So you want to, uh, you know, be mindful of the trade-off between performance relative to hormone production, relative to calorie intake for the body composition you want. And like, again, when you're a natural, you gotta think about these things a lot harder, unfortunately. Is this non-stim pre-workout any good? The guy at the supplement store said this, <laughs> said this is 10 times better than Gorilla Mode and people were saying Gorilla Mode was at most okay. 
I will butt fuck you, dude. $1.50 PSP. Uh, let's see. One scoop, or no, per two scoops, we have six. <laughs> Buddy, I'm going to fucking dismantle this product. Citrulline malate 2 to 1 ratio. So we have 4 grams of citrulline, 2 grams of malic acid. Let's compare this to nitric, which is the premier stimulant-free product that we have that is going to be comparable to this because presumably this is a stim-free pre-workout. So let's see. We have 6 grams of citrulline malate, a.k.a. 4 grams of L-citrulline, 2 grams of malic acid, whereas with nitric, we have 10 grams of L-citrulline, not citrulline malate, L-citrulline. So we have over double as much as citrulline as this company. F <laughs> this is like, it's already not comparable. We have three grams of malic acid, just in case there is some benefits to having a uh, uh, buffering of lactic acid, but that's on top of the 10 grams of L-citrulline. So hypothetically, if I was to make, list it as citrulline malate on our label, Gorilla Mode Nitric per two scoops would have 13 grams of citrulline malate. Yeah, so this fucking piece of shit trying to say it's 6,000 milligrams is better can eat my balls. Glycerol powder, 4,000 milligrams. Yeah, it's a reasonable dose. However, that is just because when you have pre-workouts, the more glycerol you put in, the more clumpy potential it has. The more potential it has to become very, very... get ruined essentially in storage. Now, fortunately, the variant of glycerol that we use Glycer pump is actually a trademarked form that is created in a certain way that actually makes it have far more It's far more mixable. It doesn't clump up like um, The other like just straight-up glycerol like monosterate does and this is why That is what's in our product But at a dosage that the dosage you would actually want for like maximum hyperhydration of glycerol is like in the dozens of grams, dude. If you actually go watch my glycerol video for an endurance athlete to get a eff efficacious dose of glycerol, you're like, you're fucking at like 10 times this dose, dude. And that's why we have a separate glycerol product because there's no way you can fit the amount in to have like an efficacious glycerol dose um, unless you're adding it in separately. If you wanted to have an actual efficacious glycerol dose for like all sports performance outcomes, like, because mainly the glycerol is going to be, it's not, it's a novelty in the gym, but in an actual endurance aspect, that's like more what it's used for is for hyperhydration. Um, super saturating your, you know, hydration is trying to be, um, is going to be applicable for endurance events rather than, you know, an acute effort in the gym where you're just trying to get a bit more swole and get a bit more of a pump. And that is where the actual efficacious dose comes in, which is going to be in the, like, over, like, <laughs> literally like 40 50 000 milligrams dude like that's what we're looking at here so when you have glycerol powder at 4,000 milligrams not only is this plain glycerol so this is obviously cheaper to make and it might start clumping when you have it in uh, your pre-workout mixed up but there's like you can't even compare really because at the end of the day this is why we sell it separately it's very cheap and you can add 10 gram scoops to your product whenever you want but we don't force you to like if i actually had the dose of glycerol you would have for like an endurance athlete in our pre-workout gorilla mode would be this big it would be in a tub like this like have you seen the fucking glycerol powder this is nitric which is already a big container with well it depends on the flavor but it's going to be around like 35 grams of actives in two scoops only reason i was looking at this one different is because fruit punch is only 34 grams active but the other ingredients and everything you know slightly different on the flavor system but anyway as far as um, glycerol, this is why I sell this. This is a tub of glycerol powder straight up. There's 100 scoops of glycerol in here. Each scoop is 10,000 milligrams. So comparing, and if you, know, if you really want to compare um, you know, like cost effectiveness and shit, it's just like, like this is a cheap product. This is a cheap add-on on our checkout menu that you can get, and it's very gritty it does not mix well it's fucking horrible this is why it's not by default put in the formula at the max dose because this product would then become literally not just this this is just glycerol it would become like a fucking like five pound protein powder container pretty much to sell our pre-workout which obviously makes no fucking sense so it makes way more sense to sell this separately as a cheap add-on and then you can stack it up as much as you want even if it's just at a novelty amount of you know a handful of grams upwards of the fucking efficacious dose for an endurance athlete my suggested use is like actually based on a scientific formula you're gonna be like what the fuck when you hear this 
One scoop of glycerol in eight ounces of water consumed 30 minutes prior to training. Add another eight ounces of water per additional scoop of glycerol added. Do not exceed 1,200 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So think about that. Per kilogram of body weight, how many kilograms do you weigh? So for example, for someone who weighs 185 pounds, the maximum glycerol dose would be 100,000 milligrams. Yeah, 100,000, not 4,000, 100,000. If your training session lasts more than two hours, mix one scoop of this per eight ounces of water and consume 16 to 24 ounces per hour throughout training. Like that's how you would actually use this in an endurance setting, not as a acute pre-workout. So getting, you know, a few grams here and there, it's more novelty for the pump. You're not actually getting like a significant amount with this four gram dose here. And them using plain glycerol shows that they're being cutting corners with like not giving a fuck if clumping happens. Like there's a reason I get the trademark glycer pump in our actual mix of pre-workout because it would ruin the consistency otherwise. Like this mixes very easily considering what's in it. Um, let's see, now we have creatine monohydrate, 4,000 milligrams, could have put in five. Let's just put four because it makes no fucking sense. Why not? Uh, like why, like why dude? Like why skim a thousand milligrams? Like what are you doing? Like what are you saving? Like a cent? Like I don't get it. Beta alanine, 3,000 milligrams, not the efficacious dose. Literally just giving me butthole itches for no reason. Thanks, bro. Betaine anhydrous with a typo in it, 2,000 milligrams. We have more than that. And you have a typo. Not that, not that that's a knock necessarily on the product, but I mean, yeah, you know, nitric, more potent. Taurine, um, an efficacious <laughs> ingredient. Not my favorite to include personally. I use it more spread out throughout the day away from the workout um, in general, but you know, there's definitely an argument to be, to be made about it being a useful pre-workout ingredient. Agmatine sulfate, 1500 milligrams, good dose, not hating on that. Uh, mental energy, okay, so this is, this is not a pure pump formula at this point, this is getting into actual pre-workout territory. You have choline bitartrate, shitty form of choline, City, city choline, man, like what? We're just put in alpha GPC, like what are you doing? So getting to repair ZNA, we have 4,000 milligrams. I'm assuming this is standardized to 1%, 1% Huperzia serrata, standardized leaf extract, just like the rest of the shit in the industry. So it's not actually 4,000 milligrams. I'm assuming it's like 40, but that's still a fuck ton, dude. Like 40 milligrams. This should be done in the like microgram amounts, like 400 micrograms makes sense. 4,000 milligrams standardized with the extract that they would probably be using would be 40 milligrams, unless my math is like all fucked up because you would get a 1% standardization, you would get 40 milligrams, which is a fuck ton. So I don't know what they did here, if this is an error and typo, but 40 milligrams is like a fucking ridiculous amount. Like the dosage even used in Alzheimer's is like, 800 micrograms, you know? So having 400 is considered efficacious. Micrograms, not milligrams. So 40 milligrams, like you're looking at, 40 milligrams is 40,000 micrograms. So yeah, this must be an error or the people who made this are just fucking insane. Cluster dextrin, 500 milligrams. Wow, that's a, f <laughs> that's an effective dose, bro. Um, black pepper extract. <laughs> Five milligrams. So as far as cluster dextrin goes, the product we have with it is a post-workout formula. And you can see here, it has um, 20 grams, so 20,000 milligrams, whereas this product has 500 milligrams. So it's like, it's like trying to be an intra at the same time as being a pre, all whilst dropping their balls on your face by even including this in the formula when we know that 500 milligrams of cluster dextrin doesn't actually really do anything. So anyways, this is not a horrible formula by any means. But for this guy at the fucking supplement store to say it's 10 times better than mode, he's a fucking moron, dude. It's not even close. <laughs> Let's see. First cycle with Tren. I'm considering doing a cycle using Tren and Anthate. What is a good starting dose? Uh, I guess let's see what people say. 30 milligrams every other day. Jesus, fuck. One gram is excessive. That's more than what a cow gets. No, he was joking. Yeah. Good thing that people know that. What are your stats? What are your goals? Um... This is not a horrible suggestion for a starting point, to be honest. Um, Reloxifene and finasteride. Should I use Reloxifene with it or avoid using both? Just because you have a 44, it does not mean that you need Reloxifene just because you might exceed the reference range slightly. You know, if you have a high test level, should you not expect a proportionally high estrogen level? So 
You know, you might be fine, dude. You know, I know some guys who run around with fucking 60 pic picograms per milliliter estradiol levels. It's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean you get gyno for sure. Keep raloxifene on hand, but don't just like proactively use it if you don't need to. Greatest crossover in YouTube history, Jimmy, Timmy, Power Hour. So me and Psych Substance, I'm assuming I'm the Jimmy and he's the Timmy. Where is the balance between training and life? I'm struggling with finding balance. I'm a teen, I'm really dedicated to taking my diet and training very seriously, but I want to be a maniac level where I can't even enjoy life. Um, I'm invited to a lot of parties, camping. Yeah, all I can say is definitely have balance, but it should not be impossible to get your meals in, like especially if you're a natural. Like how much could you possibly be doing? You know, like you can, like you're at the gym, what? Like five days a week which for like an hour a session, maybe, you know, you're doing some cardio here and there and you're eating. You know, like what is preventing you from getting to, to parties and shit? You're, you're oh, okay. You're invited to parties, campings all the time. You don't want it to mess up gym progress. I feel like even if I measure my food all the time, except for one day a week, that's already a lot. You can mess up a lot. Yeah. Like I get that, but I don't know, just like go to the stuff and like eat your meals, dude. Like that's what I would do. And once in a while, if you want to let loose, you know, like once a month and fucking binge or whatever you want, like go for it. But um, it's the cumulative average is what your progress is going to be dictated by. So, you know, just be cognizant of how much you can get away with and still go to the, I'll, I think the main thing that's important is just making sure you go to the stuff, go to the parties, go to the camping stuff. Don't skip that shit because you have to eat a meal, pack it up and bring it. You don't need to drink. You don't need to do recreational drugs, but you do need to like go to as much shit as possible because you will regret if you don't, you do not want to become the life the plight of the lonesome bodybuilder as chris would say and i probably discussed a few years ago here to be honest uh let's see guzman endorsed new ghost pre and focus products video idea for king delt hardest hitting pre that ghost has ever made for most people one scoop 150 milligrams caffeine is absolutely plenty making this a 50 serving tub does it have the ingredients so what is this a nootropic formula for like gamers i feel like this is gonna be a long video if i dissect another pre but in general this looks not bad. Alpha GPC at 600. Raw coconut. Astrogen. Eh. It's not terrible. I'm not a fan of some of this shit, to be honest. Like the the half-ass like multivitamin blends, smashing a bunch of B12 into me, non-bioavailable carnitine. At least L-tyrosine is an L-tyrosine format. 1500 milligrams is not terrible. Um, it's a pretty reasonable dose. Taurine, you know, it's good. Alpha GPC, personally, I'd rather see this doubled. Um, that's what you get in Gorilla Mind Smooth, by the way. Um, let's see, Cognizant, City Choline. I would rather see an acetylcholinesterase inhibit inhibitor rather than another donor, personally. Um, and then Astrogen for enhanced bioavailability, like. If you're going to use a stradulus, just use an actual efficacious dose, not 50 fucking milligrams. Like there's a reason I use, I sell a stradulus for kidney support and potentially even longevity benefits. It's like, you know, the effect it has on telomeres, very interesting, but it's not something you're getting any effects from at fucking 25 milligrams. I would not be bothering at that dose. Like this is just, some of this stuff is a bit, you know, height in my opinion. This is I don't know, like, to be honest, now that I look further at the formula, it does not seem very good at all, considering this is a, a powder. Like, you have so much fucking room to play with with a powder, too. Like, it's one thing trying to fit an efficacious dose of ingredients into capsules and be confined to a six-capsule space and still choose the right ingredients at the right dosages. But when you have a powder and you have, like, all the free reign to do what you want and you still come out with this, it's not the worst thing I've seen. Still shits on G Fuel, but it's not... It's not that good, to be honest. Let's see, getting back to me, Cologne Hacks, Drip Too Hard, Connor Murphy with the uh, the golf club and the fucking Aladdin pants, looking pretty sick, looking pretty sick, dude. Um, can't cross post efficacious dosage, anyone? What is this? I'll go look at that later, actually. Updated version with altered half-lives. Let's see, nine-day half-life, 12-day half-life. Yeah, again, it's going to differ depending on the person and just the general range. Uh, let's see, GF looking for a YouTube channel like More Plates, More Dates, but for women. Um, good luck. Fuck. I will make some videos on women in the future. Yeah, you know, talking about um, HRT, you know, menopausal women, um, gear in general. 
I don't blindly trust Derek's words either. Sure, he seems to know what he's talking about, but ultimately, I don't know. It's not verifiable. He rarely links research or backs it up with expert opinion or scientific consensus statements. Thus, it doesn't exceed the status of a suggestion. Uh, appears to do it on some instances, but it's never really clear enough in my opinion. I used to put in studies like copious amounts into all my videos based on what I'm referencing. And it was just so fucking time consuming that it got to a point where if I wanna keep up my schedule, I'm kind of just, you know, assuming you're gonna cross reference what I'm saying. And some of it is not really found in literature though, like either. It's not like, how are you gonna confirm that fucking EQ registers as estrogen via ECLIA methodology in a blood test? Like, you know, you're gonna go read a fucking rodent study and like decipher that somehow? Like, no, this is the kind of, this is the reason I make videos. It's about topics that aren't just like easily found in the literature or you gotta like somewhat interpret a study in a certain way to be able to figure it out. But yeah, obviously you should be fact checking your shit on whoever you're watching. That's including me, definitely the case. Let's see, my thoughts on Gorilla Mode. Pumps are insane, stims are solid. Best best pump I've gotten out of any pre-workout. This is where Mode shines the most in my opinion. If you want mind numbing pumps, this pre-workout is for you. Stims are solid, I have high caffeine tolerance and Mode is sufficient and getting me where I need to be without the jitters. I also feel very focused on Mode unlike that of any pre-workout I've taken up to this point. Flavor's not bad. I got a lemon lime tub. I can comfortably sip on it. Comfortably? Fuck, dude. It tastes good, in my opinion. There's no such thing as a pre-workout that tastes good. Okay, well, we already know where this guy stands on taste then, so his opinion on the flavor system is pretty much out the window if he thinks there's no such thing as a pre-workout that tastes good. Because I think a lot of people here would attest to the fact that there are pre-workouts that taste good. Like, I very much look forward to sipping on fruit punch nitric before I go to the gym each day. Um, it's a bit chalky. I pour it. Yeah, man, that's what happens. You have 35 fucking grams of raws. It's a bit chalky. Pour it in a water bottle using a funnel. So dissolve in 60 ounces of water. But when you have the insane amount of ingredients in mode, you really can't complain. That is true. So it tastes relatively good. It continually makes me new friends at the gym. I always have a tub in my bag and two gym bros notice it and ask me if I'm a fan of Derek and I'm fan. <laughs> that's awesome. It sparked a conversation. Now we shoot the shit between sets and it makes going to the gym that much more enjoyable. I know this point is kind of, man, it should be a marketing tactic. Should, should put that on the website. You will make more friends when you use our shit. I know this point is kind of silly, but Mo does he talk of the town lately and everyone's interested. Con, this is hardly a con, but the pump can be overwhelming sometimes. On my pull day, I almost felt weaker on Delaf because it's such an insane back pump because before I was even done warming up. To some people, this might be a pro, and this obviously varies person to person. Yeah, this is why, like, even in arm wrestling, for example, they will avoid certain compounds because they don't want to get like way too pumped up and be able to like impede their their ability to slam the guy. That sounded fucked up, but <laughs> you know what I mean? But impede their ability to win the match. Um, Cause getting a pump can really fuck with you if you're an arm wrestler. Um, let's see, it gives me the shit. I have Crohn's disease, so that doesn't help anything, but I have noticed that I need to take an explosive shit every time I get off from the gym. For reference, I don't have this issue with other pre-workouts only mode. However, I have a feeling that will go away with time once my GI tract gets used to being bombarded with them, their efficacious doses. It's like, yeah, like, some people, digestive system-wise, just might not tolerate this much shit, you know? Like, there's a lot of stuff in the formula, and it's not a guarantee that it's going to sit well with every single person. Unfortunately, in summary, I have pretty much only good things to say. It's really top-tier stuff, and it's worth the money, in my opinion. Plus, I'm obviously a fan of MPMD, and it's my way of supporting the channel. Thank you. Appreciate that, bro. I tend to stay on mode for a long time because it blows every other pre used out of the water. Derek really did a great job designing it. I'm very happy with the product. I mean, shit, the dude literally did an hour plus video explaining his thought process when designing the formula. I think that in itself is enough of a selling point, but it was for me anyway. No, this is pretty brief, but I think it conveys my point. If anyone wants me to elaborate on anything, ask away. Explosive shit, LMAO. I laughed hard at that one. There's seriously no other choice in words that conveys my point more accurately, bro. Crying and laughing face times too. The focus is what I noticed the most. I'm so dialed in with mode that I'm back to having great workouts again. It really made a noticeable difference in the intent I have with every rep and every set and I've started progressing in weight again. It's not the type of pre where the stim is high and your mind is all over the place because of it. Literally at the gym now, all I think about is lifting and get really into my music during my rest periods. Yeah, this is exactly what I designed it for and this is great to see uh, feedback on it like that. I am at 35 minutes recording for this video actually, so I might cut it off, but there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of good shit in here, dude. A lot of good shit. Like, I, uh, oh yeah, if you haven't seen this meme, it's pretty fucking funny. You've been summoned to the sauna. This is, uh, if you didn't know, this is actually like, if you expand out of this view, this is like basically <laughs> what the rest of it looks like. 
This is what you see when you die from blasting gear. <laughs> Derek judges you based on your last cycle structure. If he is displeased, <laughs> you are banished to be forever small. Or you just, you're just you just being sat there while he's recording a natty or not about you, forced to watch through your eyes, being held open by machinery. Then if you happen to be a fake natty, your chastisement is to be exposed by grace, he said. What the fuck, dude? 3,000 milligrams of trainings up your butthole? Fucking no, dude. Deep only gangsters go to hell. And trend goblins. Why is this so funny and accurate? Crying laughing face. Currently sitting in a sauna viewing the post. Why are you on the phone, on your phone in a sauna? Life on a high reel and he's entitled to it. Bro. K piss out by. <laughs> uh, let's see. So you're blasting a gram of tests per day? Fucking no, dude. You could have easily leveraged multiple pharmacologies in order to reach an even more efficacious result with far less. Sounds pretty close to what I would say. Dark Souls boss vibes. <laughs> I got a notification about this post. I shit myself. If you haven't been titrating up your sauna exposure, this could imme <laughs> immediately kill you. Boss fight subreddit. Lord Delts of the sauna. <laughs> this is a fucking good one. It says here you did three blasts in your entire goddamn life with the stupidest compounds possible. It also says here you used a pre-workout with a non-efficacious dose of l citrulline and creatine, kind of like the one we were just looking at. Also, your pre your citrulline wasn't even pure. Hmm, not seeing much good here yet. You also consumed a large amount of beta. Dude, is this not the pre we were just reviewing earlier? A large amount of beta alanine, like why, dude? I rule you unworthy of being a resident of the super physiological heaven of cold approaching alpha chads and condemn you to average gym goer hell. Gen pop bell, butthole itches. I sentence you to life <laughs> with butthole itches. I don't get butthole itchiness, I get forearm itchiness. <laughs> and I've achieved saturation of beta alanine, so I only get it for about 10 minutes after taking my dose. Oh, lucky you, bro. Uh, late night with more plates, more dates. Well, here I am. We need to see Derek's reaction to this. Like, no, dude, you're not going to fucking go to heaven after blasting that much gear without proper research. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, being called to the Delt principal's office. I believe this was presented in the most palatable way possible. This is Derek about to yell at you for improperly leveraging pharmacology. Like, fucking no, dude. That was good. I'm going to cut it off here because this is going to get really long, but I bet there's more funny comments than that one. Um, oh, this is the guy who wrote the last video Derek posted for Tremble and Stories. Please read so Derek can read out for my next video. Okay. Professional. Is this the same guy? Yeah. Okay. So it is that guy with the guy who had the top guru cycles and shit. So I will do another video for that and get it up. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed that. Let me know if you want me to react to the subreddit more. There are a lot of, even since I checked it last, like these are all new posts. So I haven't seen all the shit. So it builds up quick. Obviously a lot of uh, material to react to. If you guys enjoy this stuff, let me know. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplatesmoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, bitch you, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. TRT Clinic, I'll tell medicine from the comfort of your home, recommended lab test diagnostics. Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, shits on the formulas we were just looking at for nootropics. Gorilla Mode, pre-workouts, absolutely shits on the product we were looking at earlier as well. Anything else I'm associated with, all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.